It is a city of ghosts. Silent spectres who walk these streets, pass through these walls, whispering the memories of a time before and the echoes of a people who once called this city home. For the past six months, the people of Kharkiv have lived in a waking nightmare. Less than 20 miles from the Russian border, it was one of the first targets in Vladimir Putin's frontline attack on Ukraine. Two million Ukrainians lived here, the second largest city in the entire country. From the very first seconds Russia started this war, they've seen some of the fiercest fighting, forming a resistance Putin never expected, fending off the Russian onslaught every day. Wastrel despite wave after wave after wave of nearly daily devastation. In its wake, parts of this major European city now devastated. Thousands dead, hundreds of thousands fleeing for their lives. A world turned upside down, war-torn and largely abandoned. Parts of this city gutted and lifeless, but some brave and some lost souls remain. Kharkiv is one of the most consistently bombed cities across Ukraine. Almost every single day for the last six months, Russia has pummeled this place. And overwhelmingly, it hasn't been military targets that it's hit, but places like this. People's homes, people's lives reduced to charred ruins. This hasn't been a campaign against the Ukrainian military and government. It's been a campaign of terror against the Ukrainian people. The residents who remain now live among the debris and the ruins. Tell me about the happy times here. Here in Saltivka, on the northeastern outskirts of Kharkiv, amid rows and rows of old Soviet apartment buildings, Yuri and Helena try to pick up the pieces of their lives. Their apartment thick with soot and ash. The shelling leaving behind only fragments of what existed before the war. Do you feel angry about what's happened here and what's happened to your other home? Or just sad because of everything that you've lost? The trauma of seeing their beloved city laid low by Russia's ruthless onslaught still raw. Мы видели, мы были здесь в Харькове, когда обстрел был. Мы видели трупы людей, когда лежали вот здесь вот на тротуарах. Мы видели разорванных людей. Я лично вот она видел, видели людей этих разорванных. Первые дни. Мы лично видели. И после этого они хотят, чтобы мы с ними дружили. Не будет этого. Но не будет этого. Yuri takes me to his mother's home. A high-rise building, its roof blown off by a rocket, the apartments completely gutted. You can see all the debris that's come out the bottom. Just impossible to save this building. So many homes, so many lives, yet again, just needlessly destroyed. For what? Okay. Hmm. Oh, God. Back 
Each abandoned room is pregnant with the memories of what once was. It's almost like the real life was suspended here the day the shells landed. Then everyone left. You look at the photos there. Think of the happy lives that used to exist here. You wonder where are they now? Did they get out? All the residents of Kharkiv have had to learn how to survive. Let's go one floor more. But when you see this, every single day, it's a struggle. First month, each call was emotional. Roman Kachanov isn't a soldier, but as a firefighter, he still needs to battle. He's a witness to Russia's campaign of terror. These aren't military sites. They're schools, homes, businesses, reduced to rubble by Russian artillery. There are no weapons here, just some machinery and printing. And the embers still smolder. Every call is potentially harrowing, a constant fight to save the lives of his neighbours, his friends, his countrymen. Your heart starts to beating faster when you know from the dispatch that some kid or some uh, or some living person in the place when you are, where you're going. Then you become more adrenaline. We know that no, almost each fire right now after the shelling, after the missiles, it will be huge. Even in the face of the atrocity, Roman, like many here in Kharkiv, is unbound, unbroken, and unwilling to give another inch to Vladimir Putin without a fight. I would tell him that whatever you want, whatever you need, you will never take the city 100%. If, if even you will make a blitzkrieg again and doing something stupid and control something, just people of the city or leave or just kick your ass again. In the more than three decades Valentin has lived here in Saltivka, times have never been so bad. Each night, she braces for the rockets she knows will come, hoping it won't be her last, but the fear she can't escape. Oh, she and her late husband both served in the Soviet and Ukrainian army. Like so many here, she can't comprehend how a country that she once called a friend can now treat them as an enemy. Does it make you sad, angry? Злости, конечно, нет предела. И возмущаемся, и ругаем, и по всякому. Даже иногда и такое выходит, что и матом ругаем. Ну что это Путина? Говорят он. Her city and her home in pieces. Valentina's still unable to leave. She has no money and her son's ill. So she does what she can to survive. Звуки, ну, оно, конечно, в душе, в душе уже знаешь что от этого никуда не деться. Вот, все равно буду стрелять. Ну и вот день прожил, и мы говорим, слава тебе, Господи, день прошел. Every Ukrainian now has the same struggle inside, the desire to escape the war, to save yourself and your family, but also the desire to stay, protect and rebuild their country. The shelling doesn't worry you? No. Я попал под обстрел. Yuri Tinder is an architect. He knows this conflict all too well. He designed many of Kharkiv's buildings, including one that housed the largest and oldest technical university in eastern Ukraine, now completely destroyed. He mourns what remains of his life's work. As an architect, why does this matter so much? По конструкциям они стреляли в сердце человеческое, они стреляли в судьбы человеческие. Must break your heart when you see this. Оно не разбивает мое сердце. Мне тяжело. Мне оно мое сердце не разбито. 
моему сердцу очень тяжело воспринял, смотреть на все это. И еще больно смотреть, больнее всего смотреть мне на людей, которые живут в этом доме, которые ходят с этим домом. Они живут в этом разрушенном доме. И мое сердце печалится о людях. But in that sadness, a glimmer of hope that rebuilding Kharkiv is possible, no matter how long it takes. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.